So overall, what does a cardiac rehab team do? So I've talked a little bit about how cardiac rehabilitation has evolved. I've talked a little bit about the benefits of cardiac rehabilitation. And hopefully all of you would appreciate uh, the importance of cardiac rehabilitation and what we might be missing in taking care of our patients at the present time. But how exactly does the rehab team help us or help these patients? So they do, they do a thorough assessment, initial assessment of the patient, understand their needs, their financial background, their social background, what their potential barriers to utilization of cardiac rehabilitation might be, gather all the data on the, on, on the, um, about the cardio, specific cardiovascular condition that patient is affected with, find out what their risk factors are, um, design a specific individualized program for that particular uh, patient. So. Cardiac rehabilitation is really precision medicine. You have to tailor everything to that patient. Otherwise, that patient will not follow up with the program. Uh, they're also, they'll do basic things like, you know, blood uh, glucose monitoring, blood pressure monitoring, um, look at their entire regime, nutrition regime, the lifestyle changes they need to do, their adherence to medications, you know, cessation of smoking, uh, reduction of alcohol consumption, uh, completely stopping any recreational drugs. Um, and then, also, some basic monitoring about ECG, finding out rhythm abnormalities, seeing their blood pressure response to exercise. Uh, a rehab team should be able to recognize emergencies because these are all patients with cardiac disease. So they are, they, they are at risk of something bad happening. Maybe one of them will have a heart attack during a rehabilitation uh, program. Although data clearly shows that rehab is not associated with worse outcomes. It's just that if there anyone it may be something that may happen to that patient because they're just at increased risk. So the rehab team should be able to detect that and liaison with the appropriate doctor, you know, the appropriate cardiologist, physician, and get those patients better care immediately. So if you look at the current indications for rehabilitation, there are numerous. Uh, you'll see the reference for this slide at the bottom, a reference for the, these indications at the bottom of the slide. But it really evolved from cardiac surgery. So post Coronary artery bypass surgery is the number one indication um, in the top left. Anyone with a recent myocardial infarction that is not treated, that is just medically treated, even those patients greatly benefit from rehab. Patients from uh, patients with chronic stable angina, that means they have blockages in their arteries, but they're somehow managing. Maybe they walk and they have some chest pain. And in those patients, it's not so much a survival benefit, but just as studies have shown, good medical therapy and good rehabilitation, good exercise program conditions them to have less pain and lead a better quality of life. Uh, anyone who's had a percutaneous coronary intervention, uh, stenting in the setting of a heart attack or in the setting of chronic disease, anyone who has undergone perhaps a TAVR, structural intervention, such as a transcatheter aortic valve replacement, someone with a mitral clip, all of these patients benefit from this rehabilitation process to allow them to get better from the hospitalization for the procedure. It goes without saying that all patients with acute coronary syndromes, that is, that includes myocardial infarction, as well as unstable angina, once they have been treated and stabilized with either medicines or medicines plus stenting or surgery, they benefit from rehabilitation. Uh, a newer set of indications, patients with heart failure, uh, compensated heart failure. Uh, obviously, you don't want someone who's decompensated, but someone who's been treated in the hospital, who's compensated either after leaving the hospital or they're at home. Um, uh, patients who've had transplantation, all of these patients benefit from rehab. Patients with valve surgeries, patients with arrhythmias. So we know as an electrophysiologist, you know, I know the importance of exercise for um, uh, electrical heart rhythm disorders. Nearly all manner of arrhythmias benefit from exercise. That includes atrial fibrillation, uh, ex uh, extra beats from the bottom chamber of the heart, PVCs, ventricular tachycardia. All these patients, uh, their quality of life improves. Their arrhythmia burden decreases with regular exercise. Patients whom we have implanted an ICD, a defibrillator or pacemaker, also benefit. Um, and then the last category is peripheral arterial disease. Patients who have perhaps had ballooning or stenting in their leg arteries, perhaps they've had vascular surgery, bypass surgeries. All of these people benefit from rehabilitation or a graded exercise program. So let's look at a few core components of cardiac rehabilitation. Um, so the AHA and the AACVPR and the AHRQ, all of these are organizations I previously mentioned. 
Um, all of these leading organizations have performed a lot of research on cardiac rehabilitation, its utilization, its benefits. Um, and you know there are probably some core uh, components and that we can talk about. And again, I've alluded to this before, but aerobic, aerobic exercise training is critical. Um, nutritional counseling, changes in diet, appropriate diet, you know, Mediterranean style um, diets, um, moderate fat, moderate carbohydrate, moderate protein, um, or if weight reduction is required, low carbohydrate diets with a good amount of, you know, olive oil, nuts, salads, these kind of diets. This really is, uh, uh, so basically if you have 36 one hour sessions, each visit probably has five minutes that you can talk about the diet and it really gets ingrained in the patient's uh, lifestyle and psyche uh, to make those nutritional changes. So there's great motivation to do that. Stress management is a critical part. Exercise itself is a stress buster, but also promoting um, treatments such as meditation, yoga, all of these are very helpful. For those who require psychological support, you know, that can be provided. Um, just speaking to the rehab person, maybe having a dedicated um, therapist, all of this is helpful, but also recognizing patients who have a lot of uh, depression, post-traumatic stress disorder and redirecting them to a psychiatrist is critical. And as I mentioned, cardiovascular disease education adherence gives the opportunity to talk about high blood pressure, diabetes at every given point, um, every session, uh, and then ensuring that you know blood sugars are not well out of control. You take the opportunity to speak with the patient about what their blood pressure is like at home. Look at the blood pressure log. All of this is helpful. And focus on tobacco cessation as well. 